Hello and welcome to my new Let's Play series in which I will be playing once again Victoria 2. Who's ready for a little Frank Wank? I know I am, because today we are playing Napoleon's Legacy. Now this is, as you would imagine, uh, set in an alternate uh, timeline in which Napoleon uh, won the Napoleonic Wars. Now this isn't some absolute victory. As far as such things go, it's tempered with about as much realism as you could temper it with, uh, which is to say it's still, you know, probably not possible, but it's, uh, the, 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 the outcomes are interesting and, uh, quite more interesting than you might, than even you might suspect. Now, the point of divergence here is in 1812, rather than, uh, rather than the disaster, rather than ending in a disastrous retreat, uh, Napoleon's Invasion of Russia ends in success. Now, as for how that would happen, well, perhaps uh, the Russians uh, stood and gave them gave him battle too soon. Perhaps he commits the guard at uh, at Borodino and wins a decisive victory there, encircling the Russian army. Uh, j just you know, make something up. Say say that he does win. So what ends up happening is that uh, basically Poland Lithuania is reformed and Russia is forced once again to join the Continental System. But the Britain's state of war against France does not end. Uh, N Napoleon instead refocuses his efforts on winning the Peninsular War, which which he does. It's not, like, it, it's not pleasant, though. Um, and uh, Portugal ends up uh, bristling at the occupation particularly badly. More on that later. Uh, meanwhile, in North America, the War of 1812 continues for longer than it did in our timeline, and Britain is able to win a complete victory over the United States. What ends up happening is they end up establishing the Native American buffer state that they uh, wished to originally, and the tension between North and South, the South being apparently still holding British sympathies, I guess, uh ends up, uh, it, it ends in civil war and the North and South split into two different nations. Now, in our timeline, Napoleon died in 1821. In this timeline, Napoleon died of stomach cancer in 1824, with the state of, Brit of war with Britain not officially over yet. He had still been working on the fleet. So, in response to the death of Napoleon, with his only heir being, with her, well, with his heir to the throne being 12 years old, uh, a, set, a new coalition is formed against France, and this results in another great war all the way across the continent. However, at this point, Britain is in debt, uh, in, is in war debt up to their eyeballs, and the, this war is has become increasingly unpopular and has resulted in the implementation of conscription, a particularly unpopular law. When France is able to successfully infiltrate, invade, and foment an uprising in Ireland, that proves to be the last straw for the unpopular King George IV, and the monarchy is, for the second time in British history, overthrown for a republic. The remaining elements of the monarchy flee to the other parts of the empire. However, the various kings and princes of, in of India are not having it. So, apart from a small enclave, company rule in India is basically over now. And, the and Queen Victoria now reigns in Canada. But... Basically, what ends up happening is that without British help, the war on the continent devolves into a stalemate. A long, bloody stalemate with that essentially, that essentially ends up be benefiting France and Austria the most. Talleyrand and Metternich end up calling for a ceasefire and a massive Congress of Nations to draw the new map of Europe, hopefully one that will last. But this piece is somewhat lopsided in favor of the French and the Austrians. Since a Habsburg princess is currently ruling as regent of France, and the grandson of the Emperor is of the Emperor of Austria is now Emperor of France, 
it likely worked more would work more in their favor to work together to sort of find something that would be acceptable to both of them. So, in exchange for agreeing to give the Illyrian provinces back to Austria, splitting influence in the north of Italy, and releasing the can, releasing the Rheinbund from its satellite status, Austria then, in exchange, allows Bavaria to keep Tyrol. And Prussia basically gets nothing, and Russia basically gets nothing. So they are both coming into this new world order quite upset at the state of things. Which brings us to us, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Restored after Napoleon's victory over Russia, when Russia was forced to release Lithuania and join that territory, and that territory was joined with the Duchy of Warsaw, we are at present a secondary power. We are not at the moment officially allied with uh, with uh, the French Empire, though I suspect I suspect that's going to be my first uh, first choice to uh, choose to uh, reunite with uh, that uh, our old allies who helped to restore our great nation after the indignities it suffered from the partitions. We are going to have, we've got some work cut out for us if we want to restore the entirety of the lands which our glorious commonwealth once controlled, including against Austria, which uh, has been a bit more lovey-dovey with France than it was in our own timeline, but I think this can be done. Uh, fingers crossed, I have actually not done a full playthrough of this uh, mod, I've only, uh, I've only done like a partial test. So, without further ado, let's get started on uh, our research. Now, at present, our literacy is okay, but um, generally speaking, we want to boost your education efficiency when you while, while we can. At present, our ruling party is the uh, conservative party. The um, Look, I, I don't speak Polish. Uh, we got state capitalism, so um, we can uh, fund the construction of railroads, which is what I'm going to start with. I don't want to go too crazy on the uh, funding of, uh, of factories. In the meantime, let's... Um, hmm. Look at our admin efficiency at the moment. It's not good. I think we're going to need to we're we're going to need to uh, boost our bureaucrats so that uh, our state can become more efficient and also our military as well. We're going to need uh, two artillery and one infantry there. Splitting off that unit. And with that, I think we are, re we are now ready to unpause. So, let's start. And I think we're going to be getting a decision soon. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the first uh, the first uh, decision is we get is uh, lucky nations. So random civilized na nations who are not great powers and five random unciv nations will be given special bonuses that will allow uh, allow them to shake up the status quo. I like chaos, so I'm going to turn lucky nations on. Hopefully, we're going to be one of them. Um. Since we're not a great power, it could be us. We can just boost our education and admin. Maybe reduce our stockpile spending somewhat.
Okay, it seems our education and admin cannot be fully funded. Let's start by reboosting our relations with our traditional friends, the French. Yeah, Prussia and Russia have formed an alliance, so we are definitely going to need a friend if we don't want to get bum-rushed. So, right, after de decades of humiliation by Austria, Russia, and Prussia, the Polish-Lithuanian Con Commonwealth was restored with the help of the French after, in the first two decades of the 19th century. The Duchy of Warsaw, created from Prussian and Austrian territory, stolen from Poland, was created after the War of the Third Coalition. I've already told you this in the intro. The old alliance with France has uh, faded as a result of the War of the Sixth Coalition, which happened after Napoleon's death, and the kingdom is surrounded by enemies. So... I don't think we want uh, to make friends with uh, any of those countries that are holding our rightful territory. So let's, uh, at the cost of some prestige, go to the Fran French. Okay. Poland will never again be destroyed. Poland is not yet and never shall be lost. But, just in case, I guess it wouldn't hurt to um, build our army up somewhat. Well, now yeah, here is something interesting. Possibility for war over Danzig. I can't see anything bad resulting from that. Can you? Well, I'm going to make an attempt at it. And call our French allies in. But, once again, we are surrounded by enemies. And our armies have no leaders. Then again, neither do they. Hey, let's see if we can't march to Berlin. Well, no, we have, def we have to defend ourselves. Let the French take care of that. Alright. Yeah, the Russians... Uh, yeah, the Russians are, are coming in. So we're going to have to... Trust the French, I think, on, the, on our... Uh, in our rear... So yeah, let's get back and uh, fight back against the damn Russians. All right, there's victory in Brest. Or Brest? No, no. My familiarity with Polish of uh, Polish orthography is uh, rather limited. I know how to pronounce the name of the head coach at Duke, uh, of the Duke basketball team, and that's about the extent of it. Yeah, Prussia has basically gotten curb, curb stomped. They are not uh, nearly as powerful in this timeline without the uh, portions of the former Rheinbund that uh, behind them. So France has added a war goal. Alliance offer from Sweden. They are allied with the British Union, who doesn't like us. We'll do it just to just for the map revelation in the Baltic. All right, let's go reinforce the French right here. Uh, peace offer from Prussia. Status quo? Fuck you. 
Fuck you, status quo. We're here to ruin your shit. We're Poland, motherfuckers. We haven't forgotten. Yeah, that's right. It's what you all get. This look this this one looks like it's going to be a raffle stomp. It's going to be, has been, and will continue to be. They might want to get the army with the leader to reinforce there just in case. Okay, there's a there's a victory for us at Stetten. Stetten. Yeah. Yeah, normally you think, oh, Prussia and Russia together, we can't stand against them, but I was thinking in normal Vic 2 terms. I was forgetting that the hegemon here is France. And France is our buddies. Of course, one imagines that um, the Empire might not be in the most stable state. Certainly the world is not. Okay, da Danzig is now free. And we are now a great power. Let's start influencing Danzig, actually. Oh, well, we're, uh, we're not officially a great power yet. But yeah, that was a very quick start for uh, for for us Poles. We uh, have set our uh, fellow Poles in Prussia free of the Pr of of the Prussian yoke. Perhaps uh, perhaps once again the king the uh, king of Prussia can be, if we deign for him to exist at all, simply be known as the king in Prussia, because there is only one king, and he is the king of this republic. This unique republic with a king in it. But uh, whatever what whatever will become of Poland, Lithuania, and Danzig, we'll have to wait until next video. Until next episode, I have been Marikati, you have been you. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.